literature, one of the crowning achievements of human civilization. Through literature, we can examine what it means to be human. We can engage and confront history as seen through the author's lens. We can explore fantastic and diverse worlds that were conceived in the author's imagination. We could be stimulated by ideas, challenged, informed, and enlightened. And through words, we could be moved and delighted. My name is Barbara, and I invite you to join me for the Putnam County Public Library's literary series, Big Chair Adult Storytime, as read to you by the most erudite library staff members and friends and drawing from the best of previous literature. So sit back in your big comfy chair and listen as our library staff members and friends read to you from ours. Welcome to Big Chair Adult Storytime. I'm Alan Zirkel, a member of the library board and a reader for this session. I've selected a few poems to share with you this morning. The Putnam County Public Library is a wonderful place to find poems, as well as thought-provoking commentary and analysis on the beauty, complexity, and the meaning of the poems. You know, part of the enjoyment of reading poetry is discovery. Discovering the beauty and the poetic words and style, discovering the emotion that comes when a particular poem speaks to you, or doesn't speak to you, or has a message that is completely clear, or not so clear. Ah, uh, enough of this. It's time to begin. My first two selections are by Robert Frost, who lived from 1874 to 1963, and was awarded four Pulitzer Prizes. Frost was one of the most celebrated figures in American poetry. I'm starting with one of the most widely read poems, but also one of the most misunderstood or perhaps misinterpreted poems. So what does the road not taken mean to you? Read it. You might want to research what others say and then return to the poem and read it again and again. From Frost, Frost is, uh, himself, in a letter to a colleague, my poems, I should suppose everybody's poems, are all set to trip the reader head foremost into the boundless. Ever since infancy, I've had the habit of leaving my blocks, carts, chairs, and such like ordinaries where people would be pretty sure to fall over them in the dark. Forward, you understand, in the dark. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in the yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then I took the other, as just as fair and perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though, as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in steps and leaves no step had trodden back. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how many ways lead to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Evening in a Sugar Orchard by Robert Frost From where I lingered in a lull in March, outside the sugar house one night for choice, I called the fireman with a careful voice and bade him leave the pan and stoke the arch. O oh, fireman, give the fire another stoke, and send more sparks up the chimney with the smoke. I thought a few might tangle, as they did, among bare maple boughs, and in the rare hill atmosphere not cease to glow, and so be added to the moon up there. The moon, though slight, was moon enough to show 
on every tree a bucket with a lid, and on the black ground a bearskin rug of snow. The sparks made no attempt to be the moon. They were content to figure in the trees, as Leo, Orion, and the Pleiades. And there was what the boughs were full of soon. Carl Sandburg, 1878 to 1967, was called the People's Poet. He was awarded three Pulitzer Prizes, two of which were for his poetry. Theme in Yellow was written in the first-person narrative of a pumpkin. It's about pumpkins and what pumpkins see on Halloween night. The speaker and the poem stand as the voice of the pumpkins that become jack-o'-lanterns on Halloween. Theme in Yellow, Carl Sandburg. I spot the hills with yellow balls in autumn. I like the prairie cornfields, orange and tawny gold clusters. And I am called pumpkins. On the last of October, when dusk is fallen, children join hands and circle around me, singing ghost songs and love to the harvest moon. I am a jack-o'-lantern with terrible teeth. And the kids know I am fooling. Christina Rossetti, 1830 to 1894, is a poet who is considered by many to be in literary competition with Elizabeth Barrett, Brown Barrett Browning as the greatest female poet of the era. After Browning's passing, many of the same considered her as the heir point apparent to that recognition. Who Has Seen the Wind? by Christina Rossetti. Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you. But when the leaves hang trembling, the wind is passing through. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I. But when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. Winter, My Secret by Christina Rossetti. I tell my secret? No, indeed not I. Perhaps someday. Who knows? But not today. It froze and bros and snows, and you're too curious, Fee. <laughs> you want to hear it? Well, only my secret's mine, and I won't tell. Or, after all, perhaps there's none. Suppose there is no secret at all, but only just my fun. Today's a nipping day, a biting day, and one which in which one wants a shawl, a veil, a cloak, and other wraps. I cannot ope to everyone who taps, and let the drafts come whistling through the hall, come bounding and surrounding me, come buffeting, astounding me, nipping and clipping through all my wraps and all. I wear my mask for warmth. Whoever shows his nose to Russian snows to be pecked at by every wind that blows. You would not peck? I thank you for goodwill. Believe, but leave the truth untested still. Spring's an expansive time, yet I don't trust March with its speck of dust, nor April with its rainbow-crowned brief showers, nor even May, whose flowers one frost may wither through those sunless hours. Perhaps some languid summer day, when drowsy burns sing less and less, and golden fruit is ripening to excess. If there's not too much sun, nor too much cloud, and the warm wind is neither still nor loud, perhaps my secret, I may say, or you may guess. As a poet, author, and lecturer, Francis Ellens Watkins Harper was a household name in the 19th century. Not only was she the first African-American woman to publish a short story, but she was also an influential abolitionist, suffragist, and reformer. She graced our nation from 1825 to 1911. 
Go to www.womanhistory.org to learn more about this remarkable woman, speaker, lecturer, writer, and tireless advocate. The Slave Mother, Frances Ellen Watkins Harper. Heard you that shriek? It rose so wildly on the air. It seems as if a burdened heart was breaking in despair. Saw you those hands so sadly clasped? The bowed and feebled head, the shuddering of that fragile form, that look of grief and dread? Saw you the sad, imploring eye, and every glance was pain, as if a storm of agony was sweeping through the brain. She is a mother, pale with fear. The boy clings to her side, and in her kirtle vainly tries his trembling form to hide. He is not hers, although she bore for him a mother's pains. He is not hers, although her blood is coursing through his veins. He is not hers, for cruel hands may rudely tear apart the only wreath of household love that binds her breaking heart. His love has been a joyous light that o'er her pathway smiled, a fountain gushing ever new amid life's desert wild. His lightest word has been a tone of music around her heart. There lives a streamlet blent in one. Oh, Father, must they part? They tear her from his, her circling arms, her last and fond embrace. Oh, never more may her sad eyes gaze on his mournful face. No marvel then, these bitter shrieks disturb the listening air. She is a mother, and her heart is breaking in despair. I close with two poems addressing hope. Emily Dickinson, 1830 to 1886, was a rare reclusive individual, rather reclusive individual, who wrote over 1,800 poems. However, only 10 of these poems were published in her lifetime. The first volume of her poetry was published four years after her death. And learn about Emily Dickinson at www.emilydickinsonmuseum.org. Hope is the thing with feathers is one of the best known of Emily Dickinson's poems. An extended metaphor, it likens the concept of hope to a feathered bird that is permanently perched in the soul of every human. There it sings, never stopping in its quest to inspire. It asks nothing of us, but it constantly gives. What would we do without hope? Is the thing with feathers by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chilliest lands and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. And Thomas Hardy, 1840 to 1928, was an English poet. Throughout his life, over 1,000 of his poems were published. And between 1898 and his death in 1928, he published eight volumes of poetry. Learn about Thomas Hardy at www.poetryfoundation.org slash poets slash Thomas Hardy. The Song of Hope by Thomas Hardy. Oh, sweet tomorrow, after today there will away this sense of sorrow. Then let us borrow hope for gleaming, soon to be streaming, dimmed, but no gray, no gray. While the winds wing us, sighs from the gone, nearer to dawn, minute, beats bring us. When there will sing us larks of a glory, 
waiting our story. Further anon, anon. Doff the black token, dawn the red shone, write and retune by old strings broken. Null the words spoken in speeches of ruin. The night cloud is hewing. Tomorrow shines soon. Shines soon. Well, thank you. It has been a pleasure. And I hope you enjoy each of the presentations. And perhaps we will see each other again on the PCPL Big Chair Adult Reading Time. Thank you.